Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Gray Matter. Today's video is on the vulnerability management lifecycle. We'll start with defining a vulnerability, and then we'll broadly go over the vulnerability management lifecycle. Then finally, we'll run through and explain each of the six steps of the lifecycle. Let's jump right into it. So what is a vulnerability? It can be described as a weakness, flaw, or anything with an openness to change. This can be caused by issues with the security procedures, internal controls, or design and implementation that can be exploited to violate a system security policy. Some vulnerabilities can be false positives, and others are unable to be changed, and the risk will have to be accepted, like a joint in the armor, which is required for the suit to move. The vulnerability management lifecycle is a practice that is used in cybersecurity involving remediating issues with software and hardware in a network environment. It's also a way to prepare and anticipate attacks and how they will be handled. This lifecycle speed is dependent upon an organization's policies and needs, and some require this to be done annually, while others need it to be done more frequently. The advantages of this lifecycle are awareness of computer system vulnerabilities, how to prioritize available assets, assessing weaknesses and how to remediate them, and the verification of threat elimination. The goal of this life cycle is to identify and remediate vulnerabilities and reduce the attack surface of a company by minimizing the threats. This life cycle isn't just important for regulatory standards, but it's also the basis of every good security program. This program will allow an organization to have confidence in the integrity of the infrastructure and security of the systems. The steps in the vulnerability management life cycle are discover, prioritize, assess, report, remediate, and verify. So let's start with Discover. Discover is where you inventory all assets on the network and identify host details. This includes things like operating systems and open services to identify vulnerabilities. And this should be continued on a regular schedule and can be automated. This also is needed to develop a network baseline. Every IP on the network needs to be identified with network scanners, and they should be configured to scan each subnet. Credentialed scans are good, and they can provide information about databases, installed software, web applications, and even ports, protocols, and services. Step two is prioritize. This is the step where you identify the high priority systems and categorize them into groups or business units and assign business value to that asset group. This can be based on their criticality to the business operation. Systems that need to be running to make a company money are considered to be highly critical. Other highly critical systems could be externally facing systems that lack full fault tolerance or store sensitive information, such as personal or health information like PII and PHI. Trying to fix vulnerabilities on low priority systems when there are high impact systems isn't a good way to go about it. Since time is limited, it's best to consider the most important systems when choosing what to remediate first. There's something called a business impact analysis, where values are assigned to high value targets and where there will be documentation and even doing tabletop exercises where you can emulate a potential attack from detected threats. Step three is assess. This step is all about enumerating vulnerabilities through automated scans and doing it continuously. This involves breadth and depth. Breadth meaning that every asset should be scanned with new assets being discovered. Depth means that credentialed and administrator level scans are being used. There's a very large difference between credentialed and non-credentialed, as credentialed use admin accounts, and they can see problems that cannot be seen from the network. Sometimes the supply credentials won't work due to a locked account, lack of permissions, or ports being closed on the target systems. And authentication is very much vital during this process. Lastly, the tools that are being used must be updated prior to the scan, with all checks enabled. Just like your antivirus, there are new things coming out each day that check for patches and other vulnerabilities. Step four is report. Now that the assessment is done, the next thing to do is to create reports. The reports give details on the vulnerabilities and now move into how they will be prioritized. An asset's value or the contents on it may determine its priority, or some places will assign a score to an asset or vulnerability that can signify criticality. These reports will be human readable, but some will have more details than others based upon the audience. These reports should also include actions to take and give step-by-step -step instructions to fix the problem. And the purpose of these reports is to decrease the security risk that these vulnerabilities present. Step five is remediate. As vulnerabilities are detected and reported, the next step is to correct, 
monitor, or remove the vulnerabilities. This is done through patches, updates, or to use another control to work around the threat. If a vulnerability can be fixed, a ticket will be created and assigned. If something is determined to be a false positive or unable to be remediated, this will be decided through an assessment of that specific vulnerability. Remediation is an ongoing process, and there are often specific people and teams who work on remediating vulnerabilities. The due date of these remediations can be based upon an organization's policy or regulation. You may start with remediating higher criticality within 30 days before the next scan. Moderates will be 90 days, and lows could be remediated within a 365-day period. As always, it's best to test new patches and configurations before pushing them into production. This is a way to avoid any loss of operation or downtime. Number six and also the last step is verify. This is the final step in the lifecycle process. This step helps see the success of the mitigation and promotes and maintains transparency and accountability across the company. The verify step will often overlap in the next assess phase one month after the first set of scans. You will rescan the same breadth and depth, and this is critical to ensure that the vulnerabilities are no longer present in the environment. The previously opened tickets should be saved for future reference, and the findings tracker can be updated. Anything that was deemed a false positive or operational requirement should be reviewed to ensure that nothing has changed and that they are still valid. And that's the end of the video. I hope you have a better understanding of the vulnerability management lifecycle and what it takes to run a good security program. As always, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and leave any questions or suggestions down in the comment section below. Thanks.